zombies. Hello guys, this is The Gaming Revolution here and welcome back to an all new Call of Duty Vanguard video. Today we have a bunch of information and we actually have our first Zombies teaser. So as you guys know, it has been rumoured for a while now that Zombies are going to be returning in Vanguard and that Treyarch are actually going to be helping out with development as it is going to be taking place within the Dark Aether storyline and it's actually going to be a prologue, a prequel to Black Ops Cold Wars zombies, so I'm assuming storyline wise it's probably going to have a lot of ties to all of the stuff to do with Project End Station. As you guys know the Nazis were experimenting with the Dark Aether and the Cyclotron during World War II as a last ditch effort in an attempt to get a one up in the war because they sent Nazi soldiers into the Dark Aether for them to return at a later date because time works differently in the Dark Aether so they would have eons in there to prepare to return. And on Mauer de Toten, thanks to the help of Valentina being tricked by the Forsaken One into thinking that Dr. Vogel was her father sent into the Dark Aether in unleashing the Nazi hordes from the Dark Aether. But we managed to defeat and prevent Valentina's plan on Mauer de Toten, and the Forsaken One is probably going to be the final boss in DLC 4. But we're not talking about the future of the Cold War Zombie storyline today, we are talking about Vanguard Zombies. Because although we know about Project End Station and we do know from Mawada Toten that they have a bunch of secret bunkers, which I'm assuming we might explore within Vanguard Zombies, currently we know very little about where a prequel for Cold War Zombies could head, because right now we just don't really have much information leading up to D-Machina, and with the information that we know, there's not really much there for the need to fill in gaps, until now that is, because Treyarch have actually just added a brand new piece of intel into Black Ops Cold War Zombies with the release of Season 5, and this this is definitely a teaser for Vanguard Zombies. This is setting up something that is completely unrelated to everything we have seen in the Cold War Zombies storyline before, and that is why I definitely think that this is just setting up the storyline for Vanguard Zombies. So this piece of intel is coming from a demonologist known as Kraft, and this is a page from his journal saying this rune keeps appearing from our digs. It must have a meaning. And this journal page is coming from 1944, and then we see this rune on the right. So yeah, obviously 1944 fits in perfectly with the time period of Vanguard being set in and around World War II. So it does seem like this is setting up the stage for a completely new language that we're going to learn about. So as you guys know, in Black Ops 3 we saw the introduction of the Apothecan and Keeper languages. It seems like this is going to be something similar to that. In fact, this rune itself does look very similar to the Keeper language, and it does make sense since the Apothecans and the Keepers were sent into the Dark Aether at the end of Tag the Toten, that maybe some of the remnants of the corrupted Keepers and Apothecans could end up creating a somewhat similar language that has evolved or devolved over the years into whatever language this is. And I do think that this language is going to be one of the big prevalent storyline threads within Vanguard Zombies, but here is the thing, I feel like Vanguard Zombies is not really going to tie into Black Ops Cold War Zombies' is storyline as much as we think, although I think it is going to be a prologue to Cold War Zombies, I feel like it's still going to be a somewhat self-contained storyline, because the thing is, we know that this craft guy is a demonologist, so he was looking into a lot of hellish-like stuff, and we do know from some of the Lost Souls intel on D-Machina that a lot of people that had entered the Dark Aether described it as a hellish-like place. In the name of the Father, in the Son, and the Holy Spirit, why, Lord, what did I do to end up here? It is not the hell I expected, no lake of fire. I've met quite a few others who got trapped here like me. And every time, every single time, the question comes up, are we in hell or not? I mean, sure, this has to be hell, right? There's dead people, the demons. I feel as far from God as you can get. I even thought I saw ghosts here. but. Now I'm thinking maybe they're just folks back home and, and, and somehow I'm seeing them through the veil that separates our worlds. Which brings me to the thought I just, I, I just can't get out of my mind. What if there is no hell? What, what, if, what if this place is just a place? <laughs> what if people came here before and, and got 
out. And, and that's how we got the whole idea of hell in the first place. And I do wonder whether the Vanguard Zombies storyline is going to be more thematically themed around hell. We do see graffiti on Dee Machina of these demon-like beings, these devil-like creatures. And considering we know that the Forsaken is going to probably be the climax to the Cold War Zombies storyline, there's going to be a different threat and a different evil within Vanguard Zombies, because that was before the Forsaken managed to defeat the other Elder Gods in the Dark Aether and reign at the top of the ranks, as all of the different Elder Gods in the Dark Aether have been battling and fighting amongst themselves. You know we're on the brink of war, Elizabeth. Hey, okay. A great war. And also, Vanguard Zombies is probably going to be taking place before Samantha and Eddie enter this new rebooted universe, thanks to the events of Tagda Totem. This could quite literally be before the events of the collapse of the multiverse to put it into one singular timeline. And for that reason, we could literally see whatever happens to this universe play out in real time and the multiverse collapses. Because obviously, all of the other universes were basically for and shoved into the Dark Aether. So the prior multiverse was sent into the Dark Aether, so now we just have the regular world and the Dark Aether, as opposed to having a convoluted multiverse. But yeah, the thing is, with the ending of Tagda Toten, it was stated that it created a brand new universe, which is free from Element 115, as this universe has no Element 115 within it. But the thing is, Samantha Maxis and also Eddie stepped into the new universe right from their departure in 1965. Why didn't they just appear in a random time setting? In fact, why did they not just appear at the start of creation of this universe? Why did they appear right after they left from Tagda Toten? And since we're going to be seeing the events in Vanguard before Sam and Eddie entered this new universe, what was exactly happening before then? Because I'm not exactly sure how this new universe was created, but maybe all of the events prior to Eddie and Sam turning up into the new universe just happened pretty much instantaneously upon creation of the new universe, thanks to the Agathon device. So when Sam and Eddie stepped into that universe, it was just at the time period of Tag the Toten, and that's why they're now in their 30s, as they have only been in this universe for around 30 years. So everything prior to them entering might have just happened pretty much instantaneously as the universe was created, and we could actually see those events unfold in Vanguard Zombies. I'm kind of not really making any sense here. It is a little bit confusing to follow, but since we had the Dark Aether as it was before, and then this new universe was created, there would have been a big flip of the Dark Aether and the way it works. And we could actually see that unfold if those events only transpire right at the time period of Tag the Totem. I'm really not making any sense here. It kind of makes sense in my head. I just don't really know how to articulate myself, but let's just say you create a AI of yourself and you give it all of your prior memories. Those events won't have actually happened, but they were just put in place. And that's kind of how I'm inferring this new universe to be where everything was just put in place that had happened prior. I don't know, I'm really talking a lot of nonsense right now, I do apologise. So maybe Vanguard Zombies is going to have a much more demonic-like theme and could actually explore one of the other old ones within the Dark Aether, and that is going to be the main threat of this game as opposed to anything to do with the Forsaken. And the thing is, previously we had heard from Jaeger that there are actually multiple different realms in the Dark Aether, and it's much larger than our brain can even comprehend and wrap our heads around. And this makes complete sense because the multiverse was sent into the Dark Aether. So what if we have the regular world, but there is actually a multiverse in the Dark Aether? Like a shattered glass, and maybe there could be different Elder God rulers in each of the different realms. And honestly, this would be the perfect way if I was Treyarch writing the storyline to execute it. Because the problem with having a multiverse involved in a storyline is it gets very convoluted and it's hard to keep up with, and that is what happened to the old Aether storyline. But thanks to Tag to Toten, the multiverse was collapsed and that was resolved. But because of the fact that all of the Call of Duties are now taking place in the same universe, it's going to make it a little hard for storytelling to do with crossover, because you can never have a big event happen in one of the storylines that doesn't affect the other games. Well, what if, if there is a multiverse in the Dark Aether, each of the different games could explore a different version of the Dark 
Dark Ether or something like that. And what if in Vanguard Zombies we're instead going to explore some sort of hellish, more demonic theme of the Dark Ether, where we enter the Dark Ether and it's like entering hell, there's fiery pits everywhere, and it's very different from the purple, water-like theme that we see within the Dark Ether in Cold War Zombies with the Dark Ether crystals, etc. And instead Vanguard Zombies could explore a reddish hell-like place. And that would make complete sense because this guy called Kraft is a demonologist, and it does seem like the start of the Vanguard Zombie storyline could actually be these demonologists digging through old ruins and ancient temples, and they might dig up old caves and catacombs and uncover some sort of ancient Dark Ether portal or something like that in a similar way to the Origins intro cutscene, and that could set up the stage for that storyline. There could even be worshippers of these demonic creatures in the Dark Ether that speak this language that we're probably going to learn about. We do know that there are different factions and groups of people forming in the Dark Ether that worship different Elder Gods. It has me thinking though since we know that Samantha Maxis has gained these Dark Ether ethereal powers and she has these psychotronic abilities, she can perform telekinesis and she has telepathy to some extent, and we know that the director, who we believe to be Eddie, has been experimenting on multiple people like Samantha for some sort of unknown goal with Project Janus, then maybe Vanguard could explore some other people that have these Dark Aether ethereal powers before Samantha comes along in Cold War Zombies. And we might learn about them as they might be a secret group of people and maybe Samantha Maxis in the future is going to join that group. I guess in a similar way to the X-Men where they're kind of like outcasts. So everything prior to 1965 might have just automatically been created upon creation of the universe and then Sam and Eddie turned up in this new universe in 1965 and from then the events just went at their own will. But prior to that everything was just instantaneously created. Of course the old Dark Ether was very different to the Dark Ether we currently see in Black Ops Cold War Zombies. It was believed to be world ice before and the theory is that the ice actually melted and that is why the Dark Ether is now in this oceanic like state and of course everything from the old Ether storyline was sent into the Dark Ether drastically changing it and its properties. And maybe that switch of the Dark Ether specifically happens in 1965 if everything prior just automatically happened at the creation of the universe but then when it caught up to Tag the Toten, that is when we see this flip of the Dark Ether. I wonder if the story could explore some sort of demonic cult trying to harness these Dark Ether powers. And I wonder if some of them may actually know that Eddie and Samantha will be entering the universe in the future and they might have prophecies predicting it and they might be trying to prepare for them incoming into the universe. And we do know that according to rumours, Vanguard Zombies is going to be using similar perks and have similar mechanics to Cold War Zombies. So I am really looking forward to all of this. As he said, I think it is going to still be a prologue to Cold War Zombies, but with the information that we know so far, Trek are going to have to fill in the gaps and add information to have a completely somewhat related but separate storyline, if that makes any sense. And if they explore some sort of demonic-like realm with a new language and all of this stuff, although it might set up the stage to Cold War Zombies, it doesn't really overlap with it too much. And I am really happy that Trek are apparently helping with Vanguard Zombies. I'm assuming they will be writing all of the storyline stuff and Sledgehammer will be more focused on implementing the actual stuff, but Treyarch will just be overseeing and make sure everything's going well. And it does beg the question if we're going to be seeing returning characters that are familiar to us in Vanguard Zombies, such as Reznov, maybe we could even see a younger version of Krevchenko. And considering the fact that Valentino was tricked by the Forsaken into thinking that Vogel was her father to unleash the Nazis, maybe we could see Dr. Vogel in Vanguard Zombies to do with the Project End Station stuff. And I do wonder whether we could see Dr. Steiner in the game as well. I think he would fit in perfectly with Vanguard Zombies since he was involved in a lot of Nazi experiments and stuff like that. And if you guys are unaware, apparently he was actually going to be in D Machina at one point in time, but he was actually cut from the game. In the files of D Machina, there's still actually a lot of leftover stuff for Steiner. And I wonder if they cut him from the game because they instead want to include him, a younger version of him, in Vanguard Zombies instead. Because there has been some leaked dialogue of the reveal trailer of Vanguard. Now obviously that's stuff to do with the campaign, but there are some quotes from Steiner in there. So it seems like Steiner is going to be involved in the campaign, but I do wonder whether he could be involved in Zombies as well. And it would be good to see campaign characters involved in Zombies like we've been seeing with Black Ops Cold War Zombies. And 
And interestingly enough, and I don't know if this is just a coincidence, but Kraft is a prominent lunar crater on the moon. And within the Cold War Zombies storyline, there has been a lot of hinters towards potentially going to the moon in the future. Or maybe if it's to do with Vanguard Zombies technically speak in the past. Because as you guys know, to breathe in the dark ether, you do not need oxygen because you just breathe in Ethereum. So technically speaking, if the moon was to be terraformed by the dark ether crystals that change the environment, you could potentially be able to breathe on a dark ether moon without the need for oxygen. And maybe the moon is a location of a large dark ether breach. I do think that eventually we're going to go to the moon again after we last went to it at the end of Black Ops 1. There's just been so many clues towards the moon within the Cold War Zombie storyline. Even Omega had a lot of very similar propaganda material similar to the space race within the actual Cold War, but obviously in the Black Ops Cold War Zombie storyline, it was about sending people into the Dark Ether to harness the Dark Ether crystals in order to create technology, etc. But yeah, I'm not sure if this is completely unrelated to Vanguard Zombies. I just thought I would bring this up, and maybe his name is a pure coincidence. And it does beg the question, if Trek are helping out with Vanguard Zombies, are they going to be helping out with a Zombies mode in the Modern Warfare sequel in 2022? I would probably say yes, especially because of the Zombies overran Verdansk. I feel like we're going to see the aftermath of that. I don't really know how this is going to impact Trek's development, because then they'll be working on multiple different Zombies games at once, and it'll get a bit confusing, especially because I believe their team is pretty small for Cold War Zombies. They're definitely going to need a lot more people on board to help out. In terms of Vanguard Zombies' gameplay, because it is on the Vanguard engine, the movement's going to be more similar to Modern Warfare, as opposed to Black Ops Cold War, and that's definitely going to impact the movement because they have the tactical sprint and apparently in Vanguard there's going to be a tactical blind fire feature so I guess if you're low on health or something like that you can just spray without really the need for accuracy and I wonder how that would play in a zombies mode and Vanguard is apparently going to have semi-destructible environments there's going to be different hatches and stuff like that that you're able to shoot through so are semi-destructible environments going to transfer over to the zombie side of things too there are also rumors that some of the multiplayer maps are going to have dynamic weather changes. I would definitely like to see that in Zombies, where different storm clouds may come in and it just starts raining or it starts snowing. We have seen it on the past a little bit on D-Machina with the fog rolling in, and I guess on Origins, but I think there's much more they can explore in terms of dynamic weather changes. In terms of the maps in Vanguard Zombies, since it's probably going to be Nazi Zombies, we're probably going to see some very classic-like maps, similar to D-Machina, where it's based around different bunkers. I would like to see some crazy maps though. I honestly prefer that kind of stuff like Garod Krovi with the dragons flying around. Some people don't really like that fantasy over the top stuff but I personally don't mind it. This is kind of off topic but one map that I would love to see returning in Vanguard Zombies is Groston House because we're not exactly sure how many maps Vanguard is going to launch with so if it launches with one main map similar to D Machina we need something else and I think having some small little survival maps is something that zombies really needs and is something that Black Ops Cold War has been lacking. Yes, it has Onslaught and I would love to see Onslaught in Vanguard as well, but I do love Groston House and I would definitely want to see it returning, although Vanguard Zombies is not going to tie into World War II Zombies, I am pretty sure. Even though there was a reference to do with all of the Geistcraft stuff back in the day on Ruka, I'm pretty sure that was just a reused asset since that was in a completely different timeline, unless they find a way to somehow shapeship that into the Dark Aether storyline, but that doesn't make any sense. So I'm guessing this game will completely stray away and ignore all of that stuff that happened in Call of Duty World War 2. Groston House was a really fun map though because it was very small and with the World War 2 mechanics where when you would shoot the zombies, they would basically be stunned momentarily, giving you the opportunity to slip past them, made for a really strategic, intense and tactical small survival map. I had so much fun playing this, honestly probably more fun than the final Reich. And I think this is the best ever tiny survival map that we have ever gotten in Zombies history. And although we haven't seen many of them, it definitely takes the cake. And that's why I would like to see some more small maps like this in Vanguard Zombies.
This video has been kindly sponsored by Country Balls Heroes, developed by Anonymate Games, published by Games Operators, and you can check it out on Steam via the link in this video's description. Country Balls Heroes is a turn-based tactical fantasy magic strategy game where you get to play as your favourite country ball. Weird concept, but it works. Become a legend by leading massive armies, create your forces, build master plan cities, gather powerful artefacts and prove that your country ball is the most powerful. The game is full of memes and in real life references. The fate of the world, vodka and memes are at stake and only you can stand up against the big evil. At all costs, supplies of vodka have to be secured. Dominate your opponents, assemble your army, build overwhelming cities, raise and upgrade your heroes, gather powerful artefacts, build up your base, recruit various country balls unique for each faction, train multiple balls, each with their own strengths and weaknesses, there are plumbers, hussars, priests, drunkards, cowboys, Britons and more and this is just the beginning. Check what awaits you in the wilderness. Command your hero, lead your own country ball army on the battlefield, you won't be alone there. Recruit the most powerful heroes to lead your troops according to your strategy. Use as much vodka as necessary to crush your enemies. Use stereotypes to your favour. Experience how various means work on the battlefield, untamed, crazy, hilarious, once used will never be erased from your memory. Check with the school of memes that will suit you best. The game's key features include 7 playable country ball factions, over 90 unique units, memes in action, a specially prepared campaign based on country ball's most iconic memes such as Trump's wall, there are dozens of powerful magic memes to discover, hundreds of unique artifacts, use them at your own risk, several iconic country Country Ball villains and vigilantes, over 30 unique playable heroes, turn-based battle system for challenging combat, so yeah, like I said earlier, if you want to check it out, you can do so by clicking the link in this video's description. The game is just a bit of a fun parody, and shows you how dumb nationalism works from the outside looking in, and it actually just released, so be one of the first to head to battle against the other Country Balls. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this video, thank you for watching the video, and make sure to subscribe if you're not here for later and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.